It could have been the last Columbo. In terms of its scale and conception, it is unparalleled, elevating the Catch the Killer story into a race to stop ruthless IRA terrorists. Yet it's shown surprisingly little reverence, discounted as a mediocre mystery, some fans even suggesting that it's not really a Columbo episode. Ah, we'll waive the formalities. Time to re-examine the one with the Irish gunrunners, the Conspirators. There are actually four possible last episodes for the original 70s series, going all the way back to season one. Before the show became a hit, producers felt it was important to give the lieutenant a low-key send-off moment. So in Blueprint for Murder, we see Columbo toss away his cigar. Seasons two, three, and four end in standard fashion, but by season five, Peter Falk was considering hanging up the raincoat. Mark Dewidziak's The Columbo File delves into the why behind all this. But with future seasons no longer a certainty, we see the pseudo-ending return quitting cigars again, and placidly rowing across the harbor in last salute to the Commodore, saying he'd never consider another line of work in the bye-bye sky-high IQ murder case. And in our current case... This far. And no farther. Columbo went into hibernation in 1978, and for 11 years, this was it. Of those four hedge-betting endings, we got lucky. The Conspirators works best. The whole episode seems to hint toward, if not a definitive climax, at least a high point. Instead of the usual solitary murderer, Columbo is up against a criminal conspiracy that intends to do a lot more killing. They've killed so many, I suppose one more or less wouldn't make that much difference to them. Set against the backdrop of the Irish Troubles, it presents us with a double mystery. Who killed gun dealer Vincent Pauly, and where are the guns going? In this sense, it's more crime thriller than mystery, more Hawaii Five-0 than Columbo. So the point-to-point -point follow up of clues and little things is de-emphasized, the murder itself eventually feeling like an afterthought. I still got Mr. Paulie's murder to think about. I suppose I ought to get back to it. But there's a reason the episode isn't called The Murderers. It's the gun smuggling conspiracy that takes center stage, adding that sense of greater scope weight and importance. And the episode still feels as big, opulent, and occasionally epic as anything the show has to offer. In fact, I'd argue that this is one of the show's great entries. It proves that after 45 mysteries, the show can still do something new and fun. We've certainly never seen a villain like Joe Devlin, a mix of lunatic whimsy and stone-cold killer. We execute traitors, Mr. Pauly. Clive Revel, infamous for being the original Emperor in The Empire Strikes Back, There is a great disturbance in the Force. portrays him like a man perpetually playing a part. Look how his expression when being nabbed by the cop in his story is exactly how he looks when Columbo nabs him in his first lie. In fact, everyone seems to be playing a part in this one. Pauly the gun dealer is scheming a double cross. Jensen, the genial RV salesman, is really an arms merchant. The O'Connells pose as charitable industrialists while financing terrorism. And Columbo himself pals around with Devlin, never actually accusing him, referring to the murderer even as he catches him. Find the diamond, and I found my murderers. What do you say to that? This makes Devlin's line, the slightest approach to a false pretense was never among my crimes, into a reproach of Columbo himself. But the poet is one of the most sinister foes in the series. This line, Why, well, you were a terrorist yourself in those days. It's much closer to home in the post-9-11 world. I really want Columbo to nail this guy. And you can tell the lieutenant does too. When he spots the critical clue, it's hard to see, but there is a genuine tear coming from his eye. There's a sense of urgency and consequence here that even better mysteries lack. So why do the Columbo cognoscenti discount this episode? I think we'd better clear the air here. Well, obviously it's no longer the series finale. I see. The Conspirators was also produced by Richard Allen Simmons, and if you're a Columbaneer, you'll know that his episodes feature a much more broadly sketched version of the Lieutenant. If you're new to the show and curious about what this means, witness Columbo's amazing introductory speech. The way I keep steering and pushing and pulling at things, someday the whole sky is gonna light up and it's gonna say, Pilt. And that's gonna be the end of the world. My name is Lieutenant Columbo, sir. I'm with the police. Wow. As opposed to this from the first regular episode. Uh, you see, that's the trouble with these buildings. The fountains never work. Then you have to use the coffee machine. And then you lose your dime and the coffee's lousy. Who are you? Uh, I'm just another cop. My name is Columbo. I'm a lieutenant. 
Even the car is over the top, it's never looked more broken down. This approach isn't for everyone. That's a shame because there's a lot here for fans to unpack and appreciate. For instance, keep an eye out for another Simmons-era staple, a reference to Sergeant Burke once again involving the telephone. Sergeant Burke, he made a couple of telephone calls. Try to figure out how many guns Devlin is actually buying. Is it 500? 500 weapons. Or 300? 300 of these. Look for strong ties to the final Simmons-produced episode, Murder a Self-Portrait. In both episodes, Columbo is intrigued by erotic art. Here he's given the fisheye by a prudish bookstore patron, and here he's caught in the act by Dr. Hammer. It's also noteworthy that the lyrics of the old man from Lime Limerick parallel the entire plot of Self-Portrait. There once was an old man from Lime who married three wives at a time. When asked why a third... Three women? At least one has the hope of happiness. He replied, one's absurd. Consider, Lieutenant, how unfair it is for a man to live with one woman. Then two of them, sir, is a cross. But what about two women, Mr. Barsini, if I may ask? Two women, no good. You're fantastic, sir. I know. The Conspirators is an interesting spin on the show's usual formula, a whimsical romp through the worlds of poetry, rebellion, and international arms dealing. Even if it's no longer the last episode, it does represent a dividing line between the 70s classics and the 80s, 90s, and 2000s revivals. Watch it for its place in the show's history. Watch it for the fun performances and clever dialogue. Watch it for its greater scope story and message. But as I'll say about any Columbo, just watch it. God save Ireland, said the heroes. God save Ireland, say us all. Whether on the gallows high or the battlefield we die, oh, what matter when for Erin dear we fall? A rare old bird is the pelican. His bill holds more than his pelican. He can take in his beak enough food for a week. I'm damned if I know how to helicast.